Amy Grant, thank you for joining us today. What brings you to Southern California today? Well, I'm in the middle of a 46 city tour, and we started uh, in Northern California, and we're just working our way south. What's a typical tour to schedule like for you? Well, I play four or five nights a week, and I think this tour is unique, I think, because my opening act is my husband, and, um, and so it's not your typical traveling with a band experience. We've got his band and my band, and then we have three children. So we experience a lot of sleep deprivation, and we have riding toys backstage. And you have help with the kids, obviously. Oh, yes. Yeah. How did you get your start in music? Well, I loved, um, I was one of those kids that would listen to a 45 until my sisters were screaming at me to turn my stereo off. And hours would go by, and I would just get lost in whatever world and my, some new record that had found its way into my life created. When I was 15, I got a job at a recording studio, and I vacuumed the floors and took out the trash. About that same time, I was writing songs, and I, and I never, I didn't think my own voice was good enough to record, and I really had hopes of being an engineer. But during that time, I made a tape for my mom and dad of the songs I had written. And without my knowing it, some friends of mine took that tape and played it for a record company. And uh, it was a little more folk sounding than what I do now. But So your first record was when you were 17? I recorded it when I was 16, yeah, and it came out as I turned 17. How have things changed since back then? Well, the first six records I made, I was always juggling. You know, I was juggling high school and work and, um, and then four years of college and recording. And now, um, well, I guess nothing's changed. I'm still juggling. <laughs> I'm juggling my family. Um, and I remember coming to Southern California and having an album release um, party, and they sent out like 1,500 engraved invitations. And it was kind of at a book and music store. I was, must have been 17, and my mom was, or 18, and my mom was traveling with me. Anyway, nobody showed up, and I had to sing for an hour and a half to nobody. And finally, my mother, you know, I keep sort of making eye contact with the store manager. My mom got so embarrassed, she left. And, you know, so it's a pleasure to be here at the pond tonight with a full house. Big, big change. You know? Yeah, but you know what? It'll circle back around because that's the way life goes. You have to enjoy what you do because you enjoy it. So when you're older, you'll go back to, back to one person coming to <laughs> I'll just say that. I think I would just quit. Of all the things you do, writing, recording, touring, which do you like the best? Uh, all of it. Just being involved with making music is unbelievable. I could do without the publicity side. I never really have cared about being famous. And, and still, I feel like I, uh, I don't know, privacy is a wonderful thing. But, um, you know, getting to show up and sing songs for people and watch them sing all the lyrics, and you can just see them reminiscing. It's in their eyes. You know, oh, that reminds me of that beach trip, or that reminds me of my junior year in college. I love having a job that allows other people to do that. What kind of letters do you get from people who have been affected by your music, and what do they say? Well, I get all kinds. I, I get, um, I mean, the, the kids that started listening to me when they were teenagers, well, I was a teenager too, and I'm 34 now, so a lot of them are grown and have families of their own. And, and so it gets to be kind of a multi-generational crowd, which is interesting. Uh, excuse me. And... Um, they say things like, oh, I don't know, you know, I, well, I got a, a note that was left for me on stage today, and there was a boy that came down front last night. He had ex an extreme case of cerebral palsy, and his mother was carrying him, and he must have been 16 years old. I mean, it took all she could do. She's like throwing one leg forward and throwing the other leg forward just to hoist his weight down there. And he stood almost, I mean, she held him for almost a whole song. And he's doing that kind of wild, totally out of control smile. 
And I just sang the whole song to him. And and I and he had ha- and his mom handed me a note and I had it on the stage today and it basically just said, you know, you've been a friend to me when nobody else has. And that kind of stuff is pretty special. Um, you know, it's just part of life. I know you live in Nashville, but you spend a lot of time here in California. What does California mean to you? How is it different than where you grew up? Well, um, my God, I mean, it's sunny, you know. You can't help but be in a good mood from a weather standpoint. I love California. It certainly does not feel like home to me. I mean, I live in Tennessee, and life is different there. The pace is slower. People don't worry as much about how they look, which suits me just fine. You know, I always show up in California and look at my suitcase and go, you are a disaster. But uh, I, I don't know. I enjoy big movie theaters here like they don't really have where I live and uh, I, I don't know it just seems this seems kind of like the whole town seems like a movie set to me sort of not real bigger than life um, you know I grew up in an environment where you just don't really presume a lot of impact that your life might have on somebody else's. Everybody just kind of does what they do. And I think for having a job in music, that's a real healthy foundation because it never occurs to me to see who's looking. Do you think as an artist, as a performer, that you have a role beyond just entertaining? I wish as a musician. I don't play anything very well. I mean, I, when, when my record contracts run out, I'd like to keep writing. And. Uh, I don't know, there's a lot more of life to live besides music, besides entertainment. Are there any artists that you particularly follow or used to listen to when you were growing up? Carole King, James Taylor, Bonnie Raitt, um, Elton John, The Beatles, The Eagles, Aretha Franklin. I love the fact that a lot of the people I listened to as a kid are still doing what they do. And that's nice. I still love all their stuff. Have you gotten a chance to play with any of them or sing with any of them? No, I've met a lot of them. I, uh, um, JT was working on a project in Nashville and invited me to come down to the studio. And I've seen Bonnie a couple of times. Um, I mean, I just love watching them. I don't feel like I'm going to do a duet record or anything. Did you ever consider moving out of Nashville, moving to the big city, New York, L.A.? Oh, never thought about it. I think I'd, I mean, it's not like I talk to my family every day, but, you know, for all, for all the emotional drain that being part of a big family is, it's also a great framework for, you know, I mean, you, you don't have to get an invitation to be invited. No, it's just your world, you're accepted no matter what you do. And my, my, I have three sisters and they're all really dear friends of mine. I just can't imagine living somewhere else. Amy Grant, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much.